Well, hello. Thank you for being with us today for our children's story hour. We hope this will be a blessing. We have a wonderful story today called Casey and the Westbound Train, an exciting story. Let's pray and then we'll go on and hear the story that Aunt Carolyn Hobbs wrote and she tells even on her own radio show. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for today. Thank you for letting us be able to serve you. We pray that you'll help this time to be a blessing as we come together and hear the story and hear about how Jesus saves us. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, we hope you're doing well. We pray for you and we thank you for praying for us also. Well, let's go on and see a song that we've sung before. We'll let it play one time while you remember the melody. God will take care of you. Remember it talks about be not dismayed when air be tied. God will take care of you. Beneath his wings of love abide. God will take care of you. God, it says, is like a mother hen that has us under his wings. And he will take care of us whatever happens. Well, let's go on and sing it. Be not dismayed whatever be tied. God will take care of you. Beneath his wings of love abide. God will take care of you. God will take care of you through every day or all the way. He will take care of you. God will take care of you. When dangers come in day or night, God will take care of you. Darkness to him is just like the light. God will take care of you. God will take care of you through every day or all the way. God will take care of you. God will take care of you. All you may need, he will provide. God will take care of you. Nothing you ask will be denied. God will take care of you. God will take care of you through every day or all the way. He will take care of you. God will take care of you. No matter what may be the test, God will take care of you. Lean weary one upon his breast. God will take care of you. God will take care of you through every day or all the way. He will take care of you. God will take care of you. Very good. Now we have a Bible verse here that we want to learn. Maybe I have our friend who could help us. Angelica, are you around? Yes, here I am. Oh, I see you have a Bible verse to teach the kids. Oh, that's so wonderful. I'm so glad the kids want to learn the Bible. Oh, it talks about how God always takes care of us, just like he takes care of us angels up in heaven. Oh, that's true. It's so wonderful that God loves, especially the children. He even says, sends angels like you to take care of us, doesn't he? Yes, God especially loves to take care of the children and says his angels are all around them, so no one can hurt them, and God doesn't want them to. Well, can I read the Bible verse? Oh, I would love that if you would read the Bible verse for us here. Let's make us look small, and the Bible verse big so the kids can see it with you. Yes, that's wonderful. Here we go. Be merciful unto me, oh God. Be merciful unto me, for my soul trusteth in thee. Yea, in the shadow of thy wings will I make my refuge until these calamities be overpassed. Psalm 57, 1. You know, God lets a lot of calamities come into our lives. In these days, there's a lot of calamity in the sense that you have that sickness, but God will take care of you. And these calamities. 
baptism over us. Trust Jesus that he died for you and that he rose again and he will take you to heaven. But even now, he will take care of you. So, go on and say the verse and then we'll go on and let you tell the story. Okay, let's see if the kids can say the verse with us. Here we go. Let's see if we can make that verse big again so that the kids can be able to read it with us and their parents, okay? Psalm 57, 1. Psalm 57, 1. Let's say it. Be merciful unto me, O God. Be merciful unto me, for my soul trusteth in thee. Yea, in the shadow of thy wings will I make my refuge until these calamities be passed. Psalm 57, 1. Excellent. Well, thank you, Angelica, for helping us. We really appreciate it. We hope that we'll see you soon. Yes, I hope so, too. Thank you, Angelica. Bye-bye. Bye-bye now. Have a good day. All right, let's see if we can go on and learn the story about Casey and the westbound train. Casey. Let me move the story here so that we can get the first picture and the main part of the story. All right. Casey and his mom still lived in their big white house at the edge of town. Their da his dad had been killed in a train wreck, but they were determined to live in the house that he had bought by the railroad track. Casey could remember his dad telling him about all the big, powerful engines he could almost feel the power under him sometimes. No, this was his home. Even though his dad was gone, it was their home like it had been dad's. And there was no moving from there, even though they lived two miles from the school. They lived a far away from the people and the traffic and away from everything except the railroad. The railroad, yes. That endless track seemed like a wonderful place to play. A guy could see how far he could walk on the rails without falling off. He could race, he could jump on the ties, but there was no use to think about that. Mom had made the railroad track no man's land. Railroads were not places to play, she said. Railroad tracks were made for trains with shining wheels to fit the rails, not for little boys who could slip and get caught. Mom wouldn't even let Casey walk to school on that track. It would have made a really nice shortcut, Casey figured, but Mom said a straight no, and Casey knew it was settled. When fall and cold winter came, there was a special attraction at the school. A long sidewalk had been poured and it was delight to roller skate. Kids brought their skates and a new sidewalk soon became a whizzing highway after school and on Saturday. Casey loved it. He wanted to stay late every afternoon, but mom set limits so that he could get home and get his chores done. He had to start home soon after school so darkness wouldn't catch him before he got home. That morning, Mom gave him a hug and a peck on the cheek and scooted him out of the door for school. But her hand lingered on his shoulder as she cautioned him to come straight home after school. The sky looks dark and it's lowering this morning. There might be a storm coming, so be sure to come straight home. Yes, ma'am he said, and he skipped off to go to school. School went without any problems. Casey gnawed on his pencil and scratched his head through the lessons and finally finished the day. At the dismissal bell, he grabbed his books and headed out the door. Hey, Casey, let's skate a little while. Oh, buddy, I wish I could but I gotta head home. Oh, fooey, you always have to go home. 
Can't you stay for just a little while? The wheels began turning in Casey's head. He surely, he thought surely it would be fun and we could hurry afterwards. It, it did look like it was going to storm though. Oh, come on, don't you want to? Want to? Of course I want to. And that did it. Casey slammed his books on the steps, strapped on his skates, and soon was cutting dittos as fast as the rest of the boys. Boy, what fun! And before Casey realized it, the sky had turned a grim gray. The clouds... were lowering overhead. It was getting dark. Hey, buddy, look it! There's a storm coming! I've got to get home! No waiting for an answer. Casey jerked off his skates and ran. Wow, what would mom say if he got home too late? He remembered the last thing she said that morning. There may be a storm. Come straight home. Even running all the way would it make up for lost time. Then he came to the clearing. The railroad track. Sure, that was the perfect shortcut. And he turned to go down the tracks, but a little voice inside of him seemed to warn him. But he had to get home, and Mom would never know what he had done. He fairly ran down the center of the tracks. He pulled his collar high around his neck, and he felt the cold wind coming in strong gusts, and he heard the wintry moan rise through the trees. Then something cold and icy stung his fate. Sleet! Sleet on his face. He ran as he had never run before. Maybe he'd get home before the sleet would even blind him. Oh, why hadn't he listened to his mother? Why hadn't he gone home like she had said? And then it happened. His foot slipped on the wet, slick railroad bend. This was the danger he had always been worried about, but never dreamed it could happen to him. He turned his ankle and went sprawling to the ground. The pain made him cry. Quickly picked himself up, but terror struck his heart. He couldn't get up. He was stuck. Every effort he made to free his foot only made it worse, but he had to get loose. He twisted his foot out and left his shoe. It would be better than to leave a shoe than be pinned in the track. And then off in the distance, woo, woo, terror shot through Casey's heart like a bullet. Maybe, maybe it was just the wind that he heard, but then again, Ooh, ooh, it was no mistake. There was a train coming. The evening westbound had a thousand thundering wheels. Casey pulled and he yanked and twisted and turned, but nothing freed his foot. Oh, why, why had he come this way? Help, help, he screamed. No answer came but the wind's howl. Casey was so cold he could hardly move, but he didn't want to die. Oh, if Mama would only come. Oh, no, she couldn't be out in the storm anyway. Why would she look for him after he had been so dishonest? Help! Oh, help! Please, somebody help me! He screamed. But his call was drowned out by the approaching westbound. The whistle that at first was soft and eerie through the sleet and wind now came loud and shrill. Tears that first came hot on Casey's face were stopped, and the boy lay nearly frozen by cold and fear. All hope was gone. Another whistle came loud and shrill. Casey lay helpless. All hope was gone. And then through the night, a voice, Casey, Casey. He knew that voice. Had mom really come in all of this storm? Casey mustered all of his strength. Mama, mom, I'm here. And the next thing Casey knew, his loving mother knelt beside him, freed his ankle, lifted him over the rail, and down the embankment just in time as the train thundered past. Home again, warm and cozy, seemed to understand as never before what Mama meant when she talked about the Lord Jesus Christ who died for his sins. Sin was very real to Casey now. It wasn't hard to see how disobedience and wanting his own way was wrong and dangerous. He understood better now the verse that I, in Isaiah that he had memorized a long time ago. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned every one to his own way. That's exactly what he had done. As he looked at his mother through the kitchen door, 
He saw her face and hands red and raw from the blistering storm. He realized also the last part of the verse meant, and the Lord hath laid on him the iniquity of us all. Casey's mother had done nothing wrong, but she had to suffer the wind and the sleet and the cold to save him. Jesus was sinless. He had done no sin, but he received the punishment of God for Casey's sin, just as if he had just as if he had been rebellious and disobedient himself when Jesus had never done anything bad. Just as Mama had risked her life to rescue Casey, Jesus had suffered death on the cruel cross of Calvary to pay for Casey's sin. Casey got it settled. He confessed his sin to God and put his faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Life took on a new meaning for Casey that night. I wonder if you've ever received the Lord Jesus as your Savior. Without Christ, you would be on your way to death and hell as surely as Casey was that day. But you can be forgiven for your sins. You can have peace in your heart. And you can know that you'll have eternal life. And you can live right now and have a home in heaven with Jesus someday. All this is in Jesus Christ. Turn from your sin and from your own way. Tell Jesus you're sorry you've done so many sins. Ask him to forgive you and change you and make you a good Christian. Believe in the Lord Jesus and thou shalt be saved. Acts 16, 31 says that. And Jesus also says, him that cometh to me, I will in no wise cast out. You know, if you've never been really saved, I hope you'll ask Jesus to save you. I hope you'll trust him to come into your life, change your heart, and help you to be the Christian that God wants you to be. Do you remember the Bible verse that we learned at the beginning? Try to say it. Be merciful unto me, O God. Be merciful unto me. For my soul trusteth in thee. Yea, in the shadow of thy wings will I make my refuge until all of these calamities be passed. God is so good to us, just like he was to Casey, and he'll take care of us if we'll just trust him and we'll ask him to save us. Then he'll do that, and he'll take care of us every day and through eternity. Let's pray. Dear Jesus, we pray that if any boy, anybody's listening to this and they haven't trusted Jesus to save them, they haven't asked Jesus to come into their hearts and make them a good Christian, we pray that they would do that now that the Lord Jesus would be exalted and honored and glorified in all that they do. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Well, again, thank you for being with us today. We appreciate it, and we trust that you'll have a really good week. Tomorrow, we'll have a special Bible study in Spanish and pray with anybody who wants to pray with us online or even by calling on the telephone. Have a good day. Thank you for being with us.